tonight on CBC News at 6. More on the Fringe Festival. If you're sitting at home thinking it'd be nice to watch a play at the Fringe, but not sure which one to choose, Jenny Beck makes it simple for you. She joins us live now in the Market Square. How are you going to make it easy, Jenny? Well, today, Janet, we are releasing the CBC Top 10 list. This is the best of the Fringe, the creme de la creme of the shows. These are, these are the shows you absolutely do not want to miss. And it's been compiled by our gang of culture vultures, led by Joff Schmidt, our lead reviewer. Now, Joff, we don't want to give it all away at once, so maybe we'll split it up. Maybe tell us half of the list. All right, so a little bit of tease. Well, let's go through the first five, and now uh, I'll kind of go through this by category. So let's start by talking about some of the wonderful dramas that you can see. Now, a lot of people associate The Fringe with comedy, but there's some wonderful dramatic shows, starting with one that has a lot of local content, Wild Magic. This is a retelling of Shakespeare's Macbeth, but told from the point of view of The Witches by Rita Shelton Deverell. Also has Stephanie Weens and Nancy Drake, two excellent local actors. Highly recommended. Next chance to see that one is tomorrow night at 6.30. Now, moving through the drama list, also highly recommended. And Kafka and Son. It's a beautiful one-man performance. Uh, you've got a couple more chances to see that. Next one is tomorrow night at 11.45. And then also for a one-man show, would recommend Underneath the Lintel by John Houston, a brilliant, brilliant one-man performer. Uh, he's got shows right through the weekend. Next chance to see it. You can see it actually tonight at 7 if you rush, or you can also see it tomorrow night at the same time, 7 o'clock. Okay, how many are we at there? Is well, four? I, ca I count three so okay, far. All right, there. let's keep going. Now, for those who are looking for something completely different, a couple shows that quite defy classification for me. First, I would recommend Metamorphosis by Italia Pura. This is a great piece. It starts with a couple of monologues, but what really sells it is an absolutely show-stopping end piece where she does some fantastic acrobatic work on circus st uh, silks. It absolutely takes your breath away. And I saw it the other day, and I left with my jaw on the ground. It's amazing. Uh, your next chance to see Talia Pura in Metamorphosis is tomorrow night at 4.15, or tomorrow afternoon, rather. And finally, I would also recommend The New Art of Poetry Clubbing. This is a wonderful show that combines music with spoken word poetry, but in sort of a rap-like fashion, it's great. It sounds awesome. You really got to go check this one out. You can see them tonight at 8 o'clock if you rush down here. Sounds good so far, Joff. And we'll check back with you before the end of the hour and get the rest of that list in. Sounds good, Jenny. And Janet, I'll be back in a couple of minutes talking to some kids who are part of the largest production in the festival. 74 kids, if you can believe that. And I'll be back in a few minutes with that. That'd be fun to organize, wouldn't it? I Thank know. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Still to come. Of kids. Hi. Quiet, you mugs. Yeah, it's two. It's on the two. Lots of kids stuff happening at the Fringe Festival. Great way to get them out of the house in the summer. Our Jenny Beck is channeling her inner child. What have you found, Jenny? <laughs> well, I'm just hanging out here with some of my new little friends. They're part of the cast of Once Upon a Canada. But off stage, they can also enjoy a lot of things with Kids Fringe. Over the last few years, they've really bumped up the programming. So yesterday, when it was hot and sunny, I actually dropped by, and it turns out the reviews so far have been very good. Welcome to Kids Fringe. There's no question who dominates Old Market Square during the day. Kids, lots and lots of them. Tomorrow on Thursday, try out different musical instruments or watch non-stop stage performances and stamp to the beat of your own drum. Take an adventure in reading on Friday and Saturday. This is the first time Shandell is experiencing the fringe this way. I would have never imagined that there'd be this much kind of things for the kids to do. That was great. Her six-year-old Aisha is enjoying it too, working hard on a paper bag puppet. It's fun, and you get to play a lot. <laughs> Although it's warm outside, volunteers make sure everyone keeps their cool. My name is Anne Zosescu, and my job is to spritz kids so they won't get too hot and dehydrated. It's a perfect way to spend the dog days of summer. Activities run every day during the festival from 12 noon until 6 p.m. <laughs> and it doesn't cost a thing. But there's more than enough to keep the kids busy and get them all tuckered out for bedtime. Oh, isn't that adorable? It's pretty hard to resist when you have a group of kids, kids, really cute kids around you. And, and Jana Larson has been working hard on the Fringe. She is the one running the show for Once Upon a Canada, the largest cast, 74 kids. Jana, what is the musical all about? Uh, Once Upon a Canada is the history of Canada told through the eyes of children. And it's a musical as well then? Yes, it is. Maybe we can hear a song. What do you think, guys? 
Okay, ready? What was it like for slaves to sneak into this land? Or kids in World War II to come with a mob? Those who always lived here and those who made it strong were immigrants from everywhere belong. Wow, beautiful. Very nice job. Now, Montana, tell me, what has it been like for you to be acting in the Fringe this year? Oh, it's been very much fun. I loved it a lot. What did you like about it? I like that, well, it's fun to perform for me, and I've never been in a production this big before. It's and, pretty... you, and you like singing and dancing on stage? Yeah, much fun. Right. And can you tell me a bit about your character? Um, I'm a First Nations girl who helps the Icelandic people to, I basically show them how to survive off the land. Okay. Yeah. And how about your character? Um, I'm a Japanese girl who actually um, is going to Canada to meet her father, but she's supposed to go with her mother, but her mother ends up having polio, so she has to go all by herself. And then um, when she gets to the border, she actually can't get in because Canada has reached its quota of Japanese immigrants. So a lot of history that you've learned. Well, thank you so much for spending the time and talking with me today, everyone. No problem. <laughs> and Janet, I'll be back with Joff again to give you the final five on our CBC's top ten list of the Fringe Festival. Thanks so much, Jenny. Remember that once upon a Canada. We'll talk to you. Here's a six. We head back to Old Market Square to find out the rest of the top ten list from the Fringe Festival. Okay, so Marcy Marcusa will have the stinkers tomorrow morning on CBC Radio. Right now, we've got the winners. Our Jenny Beck and Josh Schmidt back with the rest of the top five. Jenny? Thanks, Janet. Can you feel the suspense I building? Can. I can. I think I need a drum roll. <laughs> Josh. My... Great drum roll, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you. Very dramatic. So what are the final five in the CBC Top Ten Fringe Shows? Okay, well, let's talk first of all about a couple you can take the kids to and that are great for the whole family. Number one, I highly recommend Napoleon. Napoleon's Secret Diary. This is a very, very funny one-man show. You'll actually learn stuff, but most importantly, you will laugh, and you can take everybody to it. The adults will love it. The kids will love it. You've only got one more chance to see this show, though, before he rolls out of town. Last show is tomorrow night at 7.30, so I highly recommend people go tomorrow night to check out Napoleon's Secret Diary. Now, another show specifically for kids, but that the adults will also enjoy, is African Folk Tales with Eric Duvall. Eric Duvall is from South Africa. He's been coming to the Winnipeg Fringe here for years. He is an amazing storyteller. When you listen to him, you're absolutely captivated, whether you're an adult or a kid. I'm a huge fan of his, and uh, his show this year is wonderful. Great for the whole family. You can see Eric Duvall, uh, African Folk Tales, tomorrow at 4.15. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff about him as well. All yeah, right. He's let's, wonderful. Let's go on. Okay, well, let's talk about comedy, because everybody loves to laugh. Now, my favorite show, actually, of the entire Fringe was one called Giant Invisible Robot. It is a brilliant one-man show. It's a mix of comedy and drama though it starts you off laughing and then it takes a real turn for the for the more dark so the comedy becomes quite dark later on but you don't care by that point because it is such a brilliant performance uh, i highly recommend this one you can see it tomorrow night at 10:45 is your next show for giant invisible robot i loved it all right and our final two okay uh the good daughter is a local production excellent script wonderful cast uh kind of a prairie gothic again a darker comedy uh and you can catch that one tonight at 11:15. they've got a late night show so highly recommend that and and finally, I recommend P.D. Mac in Bombed, a wonderful comic performance by Robin Slade, who is a young performer, but doing absolutely wonderful stuff in this show. You can see her next tomorrow at 5.30. Thank you very much, Joff. Lots of very good information there. But, you know, I also had a little bird tell me that it's your birthday today. Oh, no. Who, oh. So I made you a hat <laughs> before the storm. But as you can see, it got a little bit wet. If you want to put that Shit. on, Joff. Uh, do I yeah, ever? Yeah, 32 years. <laughs> 32 years. <laughs> oh, well, apart. Yeah, it's still yeah. going strong. Does that work for me? Yeah, you look great. Happy birthday, Joff. Thank you, Jenny. I'm going to keep that all night, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Well, Janet, if you missed some of that list, of course, you can go to our website cbc.ca slash manitoba we'll have the cbc's top 10 of the fringe right there and i'd go out and buy tickets because they're gonna go fast thank you jenny remind me not to tell you when my birthday is <laughs> patty whack machine <laughs> still to come coming up on news final with so many options at the fringe how do you decide which play to see the art of selling a show the story when we return
Every year, the Fringe Fest gets bigger and better. Our Connie Tomoto spotlights the best of the best and the people on the edge who keep the Fringe alive. Tomorrow on the Evening News. There are hundreds of plays to see at Winnipeg's Fringe Festival. Choosing which one to see can be a real struggle. For the artists, marketing their plays is just as important as putting them on stage. Global's Connie Tomoto is back at the Fringe today to find out the art behind selling a show. Sir, excuse me. Um, I'm doing this play in the Fringe. Um, I highly recommend it. Whether it's lounging around in a metal cage. The show is about Adam and Eve, so of course we're handing out apples. Or offering up a piece of the forbidden fruit. When it comes to marketing your fringe play, all the world is a stage. Rather, make that all the world is a blank canvas. I think you do need to make a statement because with all the companies that are out there, if you can't, if I can't remember the name, how am I going to buy a ticket? Marketing the play begins here, where rows upon rows of posters adorn the walls of various buildings throughout the Exchange District. You'll also see clever marketing ploys here at the sandwich board drop-off. And this is Hello from Heaven on the Top. And over here at Old Market Square. Hey, you know what? Somebody over the... Uh, if you want something really cool, we can sing a four-part Wicked Harmony song for you guys if you want. But we'll wait until the music stops. look around and see... But for the meantime, come see water. Some performers use costumes and props. My play is called Saying Goodbye to the Good Wings. It's for kids' fringe. I think you should come. While others opt for a play on the yearly fringe theme. The question is, does it really work? Well, the thing is that, that, that people are intrigued. They're going to say, wait a minute. Why is that guy in a cage? I want to check out that play. And the bigger the audience you attract, the better the odds of becoming one of the best in fest. In each venue, we... Uh tally up the best show in that venue of the regular venues we add an extra show for them on Sunday at noon or thereabouts and then the, the second time slot as well Connie Tomoto Global News that cage looked uncomfortable yeah it, especially today it's not a good day to be sitting in a cage. Um, I'm doing this play in the fringe um, I highly recommend it and among dozens of plays fringers try to attract you to their stage back again with more breakfast television and Winnipeg Fringe is in full swing and we've already seen a week's worth of performances and there's still more to come is running right through until Sunday and here's one that's got a ton of buzz about it a snippet of girls only well hi ladies welcome to Kotex craft corner I'm Janine Ray and I'm Marge and we know how it is ladies after you've gone through the change we know what you're thinking yeah you know you're regretting that last box of product that you bought it is taking up space in your cupboard and you're thinking what am I gonna do with that It's garbage it's not ladies we're here to tell you we've got household hints craft ideas toys uh, gift ideas you name it so let's start out with something uh, a little easy uh, you are sitting on an airplane and uh, you've got the, the guy beside you with the, the window off you can't pull that down the sun's in your eyes you need some shut eye all you do is slip one of these out of your purse and boom boom instant eye cover right okay. there piece of cake piece now, of I like, cake i like to bake and i know sometimes the muffins are done and you need to get them out of the stove right there and, and you know what where's the hot pad where's the hot pad well here's the hot pad ladies i'll tell you it's right here you can pick up something on fire with that baby right there yeah yeah uh who here has uh, some uh, some pets at home uh this is a great cat toy just real real yeah cats love this thing they dig it great now, how many of you, you've been to a late-season bomber game, and you go in, the weather's great, but by the time you get to the end of the game, you're freezing cold? Well, you pop one of these out of your purse, just snip, snip, right up the middle there, ladies, and boom, you got instant earmuffs. And I'll tell you, you could sell those at a bomber game. Uh, you know, I find that household products are very, very, very uh, expensive, and I say no to Swiffers. I say yes to cleaning my floor with my, my product. And I'll tell you, this, I get my exercise, I get moving around, and uh, right here, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. It, it, it cleans up everything nice, really, really well. Uh, we've got lots of different ideas for you. Please see us at kotexcraftcorner.com. Thanks, ladies. of laughs involved in this show and the fact that we played this for a general audience the guys are getting a little sneak peek of what they will not see because <laughs> right. it's, it's called girls only and right. it is girls only yep. women only in the audience yeah now do you find that the the buzz has increased because of this 
Oh, well, I, th I would Definitely. say so, yes, because women like to go out together, and they want a reason to go out with their girlfriends, and that, that makes them want to come even more. Yeah, they, they come out in groups, and a lot of the women who've seen it, they say, my husband would not have wanted to see that. <laughs> you know, it's like a slumber party or a bridal shower. It's like, right. it's just not for men. It's not exclusive because there's man bashing. It's just because it's for women. Yeah. There you go. It's it's not that we're, we're excluding them. It's just that they don't want in on it yeah, anyway. No, right. Right. Now it's been uh, it's been selling very well. Yes. You have one show left. Yes. When is this one? Friday. Tomorrow, uh, Friday at 9:15 at night, and it's at Venue Three, which is the Playhouse Studio. Okay. Now tickets go on sale an hour beforehand, but I will let you know I have already tried to get into this one. It's been sold out in the past. Line up early. Get advance tickets if you can. 94 Fringe is the number to call if you need to get in on this. It's the venue again. It was one of the air conditioning ones. It, it is. is air conditioned. <laughs> yes. It's uh, venue number three, which is the Playhouse Studio. Um, you access it right on Main Street, and uh, it's a great space. And um, you know, come early. And bring your girlfriends. This is yeah. one that ladies have been coming. You said that you had a, uh, a lady and she tried to reserve for her and her husband. Right, yeah. She called and said, I'd like tickets for myself and my husband. And the guy said, well, I'm sorry, your husband can't come. And she said, oh, well, then make a reservation for six. There you go. I mean, yeah. just like that, yeah. right? It's been great for us. Yeah. Who knew that, you know, something that happened so organically would be such a great marketing theme for yeah. us? <laughs> well, it's, it's wonderful. So tomorrow night, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. 9.15. 9.15 on you, Friday. Excellent. There's still a chance to see them, but like I said, line up early, get advanced tickets, do what you can to see the show. It's going to be great. Girls only at the Winnipeg Fringe. We need to take a break right now, but stick around. There's more breakfast television coming up. <laughs> It's time to head back to the Fringe Festival. It's a highlight of the summer for many Manitobans, and fans even travel from out of province to take in the acts and all the fun. But some are just a little more committed to it than others. Wobbles Connie Tomoto is in Old Market Square tonight with more. Connie? Peter, it's pretty hot out here right now, but it doesn't seem to be stopping people from heading down here to Old Market Square. Now, that's probably because the Winnipeg Fringe Festival is arguably one of the best festivals in the country. It's been going on for 20 years, and it attracts performers from across Canada and the world. It's also a favorite among theater goers, and today I had the opportunity to meet one couple who travels the distance to take part in the festivities. So that's well, having seen so many shows, Barb and Brian say their other top picks include Giant Invisible Robot and The Honeymoon Isn't Over. Peter will have to find out if they're right on the money tomorrow. That's when the official Best in Fest shows are announced. Thanks for braving the heat, Connie. That's Global's Connie Tomoto at Old Market Square. We've been in this extreme heat wave for like nine days now. And Joff, what do you have on? Black shirt, black shorts. Where's the toque in the mitt? <laughs> well, they're coming out tomorrow. You can kind of tell it's the end of a laundry run, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're living out your knapsack. That's what I figured. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Fringe is almost done. Then I get to do laundry again. Um, we actually get to see you cleaned up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No. And this book's looking a little ratty, too. A little bit. Uh, my program has kind of been through the wars. And, uh, you know, it only has to hold up a couple more days. A couple more days. Now, we're going to talk about up and coming at. And I thought everybody was up and coming at the Fringe, no. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, there's a few here who are pretty established, but one of the things that really struck me out seeing shows this year was how many really good young performers there are, especially just from right here in Winnipeg. And people definitely who in a few years are probably going to be doing some really killer Fringe shows. And so we'll highlight three who have got really strong offerings this year. Well, that's very cool. And you are a reviewer for the CBC Radio. You reviewed all of the plays, so you should know. So here you go. Who do you start with? Right. Well, I'm going to start with a show called Wanda's Visit, which I really enjoyed. This is performed by a cast that is so young. It just knocked me out, but they're so good. Do you feel so old? <laughs> it did it ever. Old and untalented is how it made me feel watching these guys. Because great comic timing. I, if you're looking for a show that really is just straight out farce comedy, nothing particularly deep to it, but funny and a lot of fun, Wanda's Visit is great. It's a story of a woman named Wanda who is the old flame of one of the lead characters from high school she comes to pay an unexpected visit and she really is you know 
that house guest that you never want to have over. Keeps you up all night talking, uh, makes you cook all the meals. Uh, just really an exceptionally horrible house guest. And a lot, they have lots of fun with this. And the cast just has exceptional comic timing. They're so good, uh, uh, really, and it's very, very funny. So I recommend Wanda's visit. There is only one more chance left to see it, though, and that is this weekend, Saturday at 12.15. So I definitely recommend getting tickets for that. Oh, great. And like you said, though, they're all local. That's really a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think these are all uh, University of Manitoba grads uh, and, and doing a great job yeah, here. It says a lot for the theater. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. moving on. Well, on the other side of town, you got the University of Winnipeg. So here's a show featuring some uh, University of Winnipeg actors. It's called Bedhead. And I saw this near the beginning of the festival, and it really entertained me. I think you talked to the folks yes. from Bedhead, right? Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. I still wasn't quite sure, but you've seen the whole play, so... Yeah, well, I'll try to explain it. It is a tricky one, but it's also a lot of fun. Basically, what happens here is we follow a, a character named Jay, and he's... I've uh, been having a bit of trouble sleeping, so he starts to take sleeping pills. But the characters in the play are subconscious actors. So you know how when you have a dream? Well, the premise of this play is when you have a dream, there are actually little actors in your head who are acting out that dream for you. So we follow a group of these actors who start to worry about their jobs when Jay stops dreaming. And so we follow them through a bunch of dreams that they're acting out, trying to keep Jay dreaming. And again, very funny. I mean, here's a really young cast that has great comic chops. They're very funny. It's a, pre uh, it's a pretty sharp script, too. They've written the script themselves. Uh, it's not the most polished script you'll see at the Fringe, but it's certainly got a lot of funny lines. And like I said, good comic timing. They really work it for all the lines. So if you want to see some, uh, some actors gain who I think will have great shows to come in the years ahead, I would definitely check out Bedhead. Okay, and I'm sure there's only one last show to see. Well, you've got a couple chances to see that, actually. They're running through the weekend. They've got a show Thursday at 1045, a late night show, and they've also got a show Friday at 530. Oh, great. So I'm trying to see Bedhead, and I love the venue. It's Rag Pickers. Yeah. Very cool venue. It's a very cool venue. Well, cool oh. in, in, in being neat. neat. Not so cool in terms of the heat, so you might want to take like a hand fan or something. Yes, definitely recommended. Okay, but last but definitely not least. Last but not least is a show that in fact is running right behind us here at the Cinematheque and Art Space. It's called The Interview. Um, this one again features a young local cast and it's an original script. Very funny. The premise is that we follow a group of women who are waiting for a job interview, which doesn't sound all that dramatic itself, but they spin it off into really unexpected directions, including, surprisingly enough, a cabaret song about scrapbooking, which works very well. That's all he'll say. I thought you were going to say cat fighting, but I guess not. <laughs> no, they, they, they take this in directions that you don't see coming, so I think it's definitely worth checking out the interview. Great, and where are they from? Uh, they're from right here in Winnipeg as well. So again, a local cast, local writers. Uh, so like I was saying, lots of great local talent coming up. Great. Okay, and last chance to see the interview? All right, you've got a few chances to see them. They're on Friday at 5 o'clock, Saturday at 3.30, and right near the very end of the festival, Sunday at 6.30. Awesome. Well, you know what? That means we are getting to the end of our festival coverage. Joff will finally sleep in his own bed, <laughs> but we can hardly wait. He'll be coming up with his top five picks tomorrow, and uh, I think you've got a hard task. It really will be. I mean, there are a lot of shows worth seeing, but tomorrow, yeah, we'll fl uh, we will flag five must-sees tomorrow. And I have to say that I saw Girls Only, and that's a show you can see, and I, I rank that right up there. Oh, man, and see, I'll never get a chance to see it. Yeah, you can still don the high heels and put on the wig and try. It's worth trying. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> and that's a wrap for us right now for our Fringe coverage, but don't go away. There's still more to come on Backstage. About a year at the tender age of barely 19, I was a very different girl. I wanted something more than I thought I could want anything in my whole life. I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted fans and limos and number one songs. Winnipeg, I'd like to introduce Petey Mac, otherwise known as Robin Slade, and uh, a very, very ambitious young lady. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Not going to be a rock star anymore. No, I, I realized that it wasn't really what the world wanted for me. And so um, I saw an ad in the paper, and now I work as a janitor at a morgue. Very cool. Now, did you ever think that you'd ever have a job like this? Um, no. Oh. No, uh, but it's working out pretty good so far. Um, my boss is really nice. Uh, it's not as creepy as it sounds. What else makes Petey Mac tick? Oh, I, 
I really shouldn't say this in case my dentist is watching, but popcorn. Oh. And gum and gummy really? bears. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do the elastics yet? No, not yet. I don't have to do the power change, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really shouldn't have them anymore. But my orthodontist says it's fine. <laughs> that you know, lots of people in the early 20s still have braces. I mean, it's not much of a shocker. Had a lot of potential, a lot of raw energy. <laughs> but all it took was a simple black and white ad in the paper to really put my goals and dreams into perspective. I guess it also helped having my dad say things to me like, P Mac, you're never gonna be a rock star. You just don't have the passion. Now get yourself a hand towel, you're drooling. I keep it close to my bed, the ad, to remind myself every day that I'm making positive choices and changes in my life. A girl, no more. I'm becoming a woman. I, I think that the people could learn a lot from me, you know, and, and maybe be inspired a little bit. Really? In what way? Because I know I don't really look that old, and I'm not that big, and I don't have a hot body like all the other girls, but, but I'm really smart, and, and I have some things I'd like people to know about the world they're living in. Oh, very good. Well, we wish you all the best on the fringe, Petey. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Petey Mac, embalmed, venue 13 at Rag Pickers. <laughs> well, if you haven't checked out the Fringe Festival yet, you have four days left, and there's lots to see. Jenny Beck is live at Old Market Square. And Jenny, <laughs> what are you doing? You're on a pony. <laughs> I am. On, on, I'm on good old Misty here. Now that the weather has cooled down, the petting zoo has come out again, and some pony rides. They'll be back here on Saturday if you're interested. But if you're more interested in breakout shows, there have been quite a few this year. Last night, 17 shows actually sold out. That's, that's quite remarkable. CBC, we all also released our top 10 list. Woo, Missy's getting a bit frisky here. Uh, as well as the uh, Fringe Festival, they released their best of the fest. Uh, so I really encourage people to go to our website to access those lists at cbc.ca slash Manitoba for that. I'll also be back with one of the top selling shows of the festival. It's called, woo! <laughs> great show. It's about a man who was in a religious cult for three years. And of course, Josh Schmidt will be by with his favorite picks. And this time he's focusing on local Winnipeg shows. So lots of good news you can use still up ahead. He's going to have a tough time topping Misty, though. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jenny. No problem. <laughs> Hi. Quiet, you mugs. Jerry Stewart's on the tooth. You know, there's never a shortage of interesting performances at our Fringe Festival, so where do the artists find the inspiration? Let's ask Jenny Beck. I'm a little... Oh, you're off the horse. I'm off the horse. Oh, good. Missy's very happy. So what's happening tonight at the Exchange District? Well, lots are happening here, and I did ask, I wonder about that question, too. Where do artists get their inspiration? And it seems like a lot of them draw it from their own personal experience, and that's certainly the case with June Morrow. She's putting on a show called Miss April Day School for Burgeoning Young Strippers. She's currently a journalist, but she's she worked a little while as a stripper. June, why did you want to become a stripper? Well, growing up, I'd seen all these depictions of strippers in movies, and I thought it was like in the old westerns, like I'd be a saloon girl. So I went in with that kind of idea, thinking, hey, this is glamorous and fun. And then as you find out in my play, it was actually a lot different. So tell me a little bit about your play then. Well, it's a musical one-woman comedy about taking it off. It's very revealing in more ways than one. Um, <laughs> there's Do you actually strip? Uh, I don't strip per se. Sometimes people try and get naked. It varies depending on the show, yeah. Yeah. So what do you hope people will walk away with after seeing your show? Well, I hope that they come with out of the show with the realization that stripping is more about putting things on than it is about taking things off. Like, as when you become a stripper, you put on this mask, you put on a stage name and a different identity, and you kind of develop this shell. And I hope that people walk away thinking about the masks they put on in their own lives. Wow, great, wonderful. Thank you very much for this, June. Thank you. Now, from turning from life as a stripper to life in a religious cult, that was the case for Barry Smith. He spent three years believing an 80-year-old chiropractor was Jesus. Hi there, Barry. So your show is called Jesus in Montana Adventures in a Doomsday Cult. How did you first get involved with this cult? 
Well, it was about 1991. I was 24 years old, time of the first Gulf War, and uh, I was raised Southern Baptist. I'm from the States. And um, I, I thought the end of the world was, was near, like that week. And it was in that week that I heard that Jesus had returned. So I was in a strange enough uh, headspace that I thought I should probably check into it. And, uh, and I did, and I ended up living in Jesus' basement for a summer and thinking he really was Jesus for about three years. So what kind of lifestyle were you living at that time? Well, it was your basic uh, living in Jesus lifestyle, you know, uh, to hang out during the day playing hacky sack and stuff like that. And Jesus would, uh, he, he made us big meals, uh, fish sticks and loaves and things like that. And, uh, it, was, uh, it was mostly about spreading the word, you know, handing out pamphlets and stapling papers and things like that. You know, basic cult life, I think, yeah. So tell me a little bit, a bit about your show. Is it a direct reflection of the your actual real life? Yes, my show is true. It's a true story. It's a comedy, which I always have to point out because people usually don't associate Jesus and cult with comedy, but it is comedy. It's a multimedia show, so I've got slides, video, PowerPoint, pictures of me as a cute little kid, all the things you would need to lead me, lead you, the audience, through my very strange decision-making process and how I got into it and out of a cult. I'm not in the cult anymore. I'm not sure if I pointed that out uh, soon enough. Well, I'm glad you're not in the cult and you're here at the Fringe Festival. Best of luck with the show, then. Thank you. <laughs> well, Janet, both of these shows are actually touring across Canada. And if you'd like to read a full review, of course, go to our website, cbc.ca slash Manitoba. Thanks, Jenny. We'll check in with you a little later. Okay. He needs at six. Jenny Beck back live at Old Market Square with more fun and more reviews from the Fringe Festival. Jenny Beck's been doing all the hard work for you, figuring out what's good to see at the Fringe Festival with help from other people. I know there are a lot of international performers at the Fringe you Festival this year. Jenny, how many local productions are actually involved? There's actually more than 60 productions uh, okay, coming from ready. Winnipeg, so and it's really become a sort of dad, rite of passage for young thespians. The festival can be an excellent training ground for actors. So today, our reviewer, Joff Schmidt, is going to be talking about some excellent local productions to check out. So Joff, when it comes to Winnipeg productions, what should we be watching? Well, there's a few to highlight here. Uh, one that I haven't seen yet, but is on my list of things to see this weekend, is called Mel Sorry, Men Seldom Make Passes at Girls Who Wear Glasses. That's a hard title. I'm not wearing my glasses today. <laughs> and for good reason. Now, this is a great production uh, by a company called Theatre Incarnate. They do uh, Fringe regularly, and also Theatre Outside the Fringe, too. Very professional local company. It's a one-woman show performed by Brenda McLean, who I've seen do some wonderful performances in the past. So I'm looking forward to this. It's based on the writing of Dorothy Parker and, uh, and a very good show by all accounts. So you can check that one out. She's got performances nightly from now till Saturday at 8.30. Yeah. All right, one to check out. Definitely. What else do you have? Uh, I would also recommend Homely Woman Number 2. Now, a lot of people discovered this one. It was kind of a sleeper hit of the fringe. It's by Trish Cooper, who is a local writer and performer. She used to perform with the Royal Liechtenstein Theatre Company, sketch comedy troupe. She's very funny. This is a great one-woman story about her struggles as an actor, but it is funny. Uh, Trish uh, actually won Best of Fest, so she'll be at her uh, venue doing two performances on Sunday, one at noon and one at four o'clock. And then finally, would also recommend Story of a Sinking Man, starring Arne McPherson of Shakespeare in the Ruins, a uh, very popular local actor. He does a wonderful one-man show here based on, uh, it's a Morris Panitch play, very funny Canadian writer. So if you're looking for something a little quirky, a little different, I would recommend Story of a uh, Sinking Man. Next show is Saturday at 5.30. Joff, thank you very much for all those local recommendations. And we'll see you again for our last hit tomorrow. That's right. One more tomorrow. I'll see you then, Jenny. Okay, sounds Thanks. good. Thanks, Joff. And Janet, of course, go to our website for more reviews, cbc.ca slash Manitoba. All your fringing needs answered right there. You got it, Jenny. Thanks so much. Still to come Jamie. If you don't win tickets, you can always go to the Fringe. Coming up, the best of the best at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival this year. Stay with us. With over 100 shows to see, it's tough to take in every production at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival. But good news for some, the best of list is out. And that means you will get a chance to take in some acts you may have missed. Global Sleeps the Best brings us an update of what's hot on the Fringe front this year. We're at the halfway for the Fringe Festival in downtown Winnipeg. And of course, the question on everyone's mind at this point, with 139 theater troops in town, what shows do you see? Everyone has a favorite, even the organizers who attempt to remain unbiased give in. Absolutely. I was in line, sat in line, I was sitting on my stool for Wild Magic. Today at 12.45. Continue changing the whole day. 
Every every time this show is over, the, this show is over at uh, 12 uh, 45. It changes, so I take that down and put the next one up. You can't get it wrong. I better not get it wrong. In these hot dog days of summer, a flurry of theatrics at 23 hot spots downtown is a great escape. Uh, most of the fringe I've seen is while walking our dog. So we've been hanging out the hanging out the outdoor stage quite a bit. There are 139 theater troops in town for the fringe. Most people we'd spoken to had seen five. Okay. So yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough to get to everything. So if you can't see it all, word of mouth is a powerful ally in finding folks who are acting up the way you like. See, I saw Bashed. It's a, a gay rock opera. It was really good. Uh, what else did I see? I saw uh, uh, Necessary Deceptions and Other Lies. I think that's what it's called. It was really good. Uh, what else did I see? Our Necessary Deceptions we saw, which is fantastic. And uh, the History of uh, Theater which was great. I saw Heat Wave. Yeah, he was right. awesome. Organizers are trying to help by releasing a Best of the Fringe list during the event. This year, the acts given the green light to perform an extra show each this Sunday include such colorful titles as Deep Fried Curried Pierogies, Jesus in Montana, Adventures in a Doomsday Cult, The Genghis Khan Guide to Etiquette, and The Mennonite's Guide to Savage Street Fighting. We've had one sellout, we've had two of 100 plus, so so we've been doing well so far. With a starting cost of just $5 a pop, any fringe performance is better than a movie because you can schmooze with the actors after the show. For Global News, this is Lisa Best reporting. Oh, Joff, I had to be one up on you. If we're going to end off our fringe coverage, it's going to be with a bang. I've got Melissa leading Cloudy. And I was so jealous of all the kids riding these pony rides all the time during the fringe, courtesy of Graham's Pony Rides out of St. Andrews. And I hear they even do birthday parties, Joff. When's your birthday? Would you believe it's today? Today? A little day. It really is. No. I swear it is. But but I think the ponies might be a little a little too small for me to do my pony ride this year. Maybe next year if they have bigger ponies. Aw, uh, here you are on your birthday, still working. Yeah, well, n Fringe never stops, you know? Fringe acknowledges no birthdays. <laughs> All right, I won't get off my high horse yet, but we are talking about the top five of the Fringe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, if you head to the CBC website, we do have a top 10 list up, but top 10 lists are always so difficult to do because especially this year, it could easily have been a top 20 list. So I'm going to highlight some of the honorable mentions that could just as easily be on a top 10 list and that provide a lot of great picks for people. And you better say them fast because Cloudy's moving away. All right. All right. Hold still, Cloudy. I'll make this quick. All right. So number one, I would recommend Bashed. We talked about this uh, right near the beginning of the festival. Uh, this is the gay rap opera by uh, Chris Craddock, who wrote Boy Groove, big fringe hit from a few years ago. It's a really wonderful, uh, wonderful piece of work. Uh, it's great for anybody who likes musicals, anyone who's looking for a really high energy piece of theater to see for the last weekend. I understand that crowds have not been very good, which I cannot understand. People should definitely go see Bashed. So there are a couple more chances to see that. Uh, you can see it Friday night at 11.15, Saturday at 9.45, and Sunday night right near the end of the festival at 7 o'clock. That's for Bashed. Very good. Cloudy gives it one foot stomp. Moving on. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's talk. Well, speaking of foot stomping, let's talk a little bit about dance. Coming highly recommended is Private Eye by Jolene Bailey. Jolene Bailey, of course, is a Winnipeg favorite, a Winnipeg Fringe Festival favorite. Her show this year, if you want to see dance, apparently is the one to see. A uh, great mix of dance and monologues. Jolene Bailey, as always, amazing to watch. So definitely people should check out Private Eye. A couple more chances to see that Friday at 545, or if you've missed that one, there's a Saturday show at 1015 in the evening. And as a sidebar, I stalked the group that did the uh, music for her, the Hila Zolas during the Jazz Festival. They're unbelievable. Great musicians. Yeah, I saw them at the Jazz Fest too, and, and that's another thing. The music in this show will be wonderful because the Hila Zolas are fantastic. Okay, so moving on, let's uh, recommend another one. One that everyone will need on a day like this, water. 
Water comes from uh, Ribbit uh, Republic in Edmonton, who have brought some great French shows to us in the past, including Boy Group. This was the company that performed Boy Group. So here they've got a show that talks about, as you might guess, water. And they kind of uh, go into a really interesting exploration of what water means to us, the politics behind water. And they use a, a mix of sketch, uh, some music, some mime. Comes highly recommended. You got a couple more chances to check out water. They're on Friday at 7.30, or if you missed that one, Sunday, last day of the festival. Well, you can check them out at 415. All right. Okay, so isn't there anything about sharks and weirdness coming up? Oh, there sure is. There sure is. And another musical. I saw this one last week and really enjoyed it. It's called Giant Killer Shark, the Musical. Now, it's based on a movie. It begins with J, ends with Oz. They can't mention it in the show because apparently there's some copyright issues. But if you're looking for a really funny, funny musical, this comes highly recommended. It's definitely, uh, like, these are guys definitely who appreciate the kind the Simpsons type of humor. Uh, it's aimed, I think, mostly at a demographic that probably wasn't even born when Jaws came out. But it's very funny if you like that kind of ironic sense of humor. And what's amazing is three guys perform the entire thing, and they've got good voices, there's great music, and it's lots of fun. So I highly recommend Giant Killer Shark, the musical. Any blood? Uh, yes, there certainly is. At the end, be careful about sitting in the front row, because I understand somebody got a little splashed the other day. Oh, okay, that comes with fair warning. Well, to wrap things up, at the very end, they have Best of the Fringe, but they also have the Harry Rintoul Award for Best Playwright. So I want to know, who do you pick? Well, a lot of good shows this year, but I think the one that's really getting a lot of buzz for new scripts is The Good Daughter, which is by a local writer. Uh, it's got a very strong local cast. It's kind of a prairie gothic dark comedy, and by all accounts, the script is wonderful. So if I had to place a bet on it, that would be my bet. All right, I can't believe it. We survived another fringe. We survived the heat wave. Thanks so much to Joff, CBC. All those reviews, you can check them out on their website, which is? cbc.ca slash Manitoba. And if you're tired of that, you can even click on the Shaw TV bug and see the rest of our crazy antics all this two weeks. That's right, there to savor, yeah. And happy birthday again. Well, thanks, Tracy. Maybe, maybe I'll try for a pony ride. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, you know what? We could ride off into the sunset forever. <laughs> That is a wrap for our Fringe Fest coverage. Thanks so much to Cloudy. Thanks to Melissa. Thanks to Graham's Pony Rides for allowing me to have a little bit of a rest. And he's getting a little stompy, so we're going to say that's a wrap for the Fringe. Stay tuned. There's still more to come on Backstage. Come. Jay's going to need us soon, and when he does... We'll be ready. Really? You really think so? You know those little triangle pills he's been taking? You know what they do, right? Jason's been stressed. He needs them. No! No! When you get stressed out, you take a bath. You sip some wine or you jerk off and you try and get some sleep. You do not force complete unconsciousness upon yourself. Classic us. Maybe a classic play, Bedhead. But Brittany, I know we're used to the fringe being kind of funny, lots of comedy, maybe a little bit of sexuality and obscenity, but Bedhead. We have every single one of those aspects. <laughs> I can assure you they're there. You promise? I absolutely guarantee that it is as sexual, it is funny, it is gratuitous, it has every element that makes a show entertaining. <laughs> and they're all laughing. This is a wonderful <laughs> cast, of course, here. All local? Every single person here is local. And where did you hunt them down? Um, actually, from the U of W is where they mostly originate from. Oh, very cool. So, yeah. Okay, getting down into the story, the triangle pills. The triangle pills are sleeping pills, actually, and it's the focus of our main character who is never actually seen he takes sleeping pills and my actors reenact his dreams every single night and they're the players of his mind and as he's taking the sleeping pills he can't actually have the dreams anymore so he's forced to have to fire his actors so they're trying to pull together and find a way to prevent that from happening if jay stops dreaming where do we go someone has to say something no one can well why don't we do it why don't we just convince jay he needs to stop taking the pills you, you could come to him as an evil drug pusher who sells him bottle of pills, and when he takes the pills, they turn into little knives and start tearing up his inside. And I'll be caught for blood, and it'll be all graphic, like... Oh, 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 oh. Now, when you're rehearsing and you've got everybody here, you've got a fairly big cast, five players, so do people actually contribute a little bit too? Oh, to absolutely. It's a 100% collaborative process. Uh, process. I could not in Can any I way, shape, or form that? take any single credit for this show, because I, I have six people working behind me that are absolutely amazing. The show's called Bedhead. 
at Venue 13 Rag Pickers. The company is called Classic Us. Thanks so much, Brittany. Thank you very much. We appreciate you guys coming down. It is time now for our weekly look at Uptown Magazine. And oh my goodness, the beautiful neon over our shoulders. This is a first. We've never had the neon sign in the shot before. No, great vision for spotting that. And silly, <laughs> silly me for not thinking of it previously. John Kendall with Uptown Magazine. Tell us, is it all fringe this week or do we have other delights to look at? Well, there's lots and lots of fringe. Uh, the Fringe Festival goes into its last weekend this week. Uh, things wrap up on Sunday night. And from what I hear, uh, they're going to be breaking attendance records again this year, which is fantastic. It's uh, almost the biggest fringe ever, 136 companies, and Uptown outdid itself this year. We got out and reviewed nearly 100 of those shows, and uh, in this week's issue of the paper, you'll find uh, 44 of the best reviews, and online at uptownmag.com, you'll find all of our reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, first time we've posted them to the website um, completely, so uh, we're pretty excited about that and hoping for a spike in and, uh, page views and all that kind of thing. All right. Well, uh, we do know that's where we can get all our info about the Fringe. But as mentioned, there's some other great stuff happening in the city this weekend, musical-wise. That's right. It's uh, you know it's not all Fringe, uh, although lots of people although are going to be, be out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but some notable things. Well, as we mentioned, of course, the Fringe is almost wrapping up. So I'm going to leave you with a challenge, actually, John Kendall. I challenge you at Uptown Magazine. Start preparing now. Do whatever you have to do in the next 12 months. I challenge you to review every single Fringe show next year. Okay. All of them. Every yeah. single one. Can we enlist you? We'll even pay you. Oh, right. Well, if you're paying me, I'm in. All right. There we okay, go. So I think I'm halfway there. The challenge is on. John Kendall and Uptown Mag, they're going to review every Fringe show next year. But in the meantime, you can catch up on all of this year's shows. UptownMag.com. John, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, this is also the last weekend you can take in the fun at this year's Fringe Festival. Our Jenny Beck joins us now live from Old Market Square, which has been for a week and a half now in the Exchange District. How's the festival doing, Jenny? Really well. Total ticket sales are at 55,000 so far, which is an increase of 5,000 from last year. So that's nice. Not the same case here at the outdoor free market. Here at Old Market Square, they've actually seen a decrease of about 30,000 people. Of course, that was due to the heat wave. And that mostly affects the buskers that you see behind me, as well as the vendors. I was actually speaking to the owner of Santa Lucia Pizza, and he was saying sales are the lowest he's seen in seven years. But that is what the Fringe Festival is all about. Big high and brutal lows, especially for performers, depending on how their shows are doing. And a lot of that might depend on reviews. So I wanted to speak to someone who got slayed by the reviews. So in a few minutes, I'll be talking to one performer who received a meager one star out of five rating, and we'll, she, we'll see how she's surviving the Fringe so far. Eek. Thanks very much, Jenny. We're getting back live at the Fringe Festival. Still to come. Hi. Quiet, you mugs. Yeah, it's do it's on the tooth. Now, all through the French Festival, we've been showing you the great successes, the must-see shows, according to the critics. Theater is very subjective. You might not agree with a review, but right or wrong, critics wield a lot of influence. Tonight, our Jenny Beth put the spotlight on a show that kind of bombed with the critics, didn't it, Jenny? You're right, Janet. And you're right, it's the outstanding shows that usually get all the attention. But what about the overlooked shows that maybe just got one star? Well, Kara Litwin, she is with a show called Three Guys, One Girl, and a Two Drink Minimum. It got a scathing review by one of our CBC Culture Vultures and a one-star rating. Kara, how did that affect your ticket sales? It actually didn't affect very much. We had very good turnouts both at the beginning of the Fringe and after when the reviews came out. Well, that's encouraging. Tell me a bit about your show. Well, we, uh, we perform stand-up co comedy. Comedy, and uh, it's not exactly like a comedy club setting. It's a little more edgy, a little more vulgar, as some of the reviews have said, because we, we try and do our own thing, and we're, we're new at it. So, All right. Well, it obviously didn't resonate with our reviewer, Bertram Schneider. Uh, let me just read a little bit of that re review. He wrote, it's not funny. It's not even stupid funny. Don't go to this show. Stay home and wash out your garbage cans. It will be more satisfying and less stinky. Ouch. That's pretty harsh. How, how did you feel when you first read that review? I definitely stung. And I think we realized that, uh, you know, there's only one person that's more self-loathing and self-deprecating than a comic, and that's a reviewer. That's what I think. We should all, we have a lot in common, I think, so. So, do you feel that affected your performances? At the first one, it did. The one that, that happened after they came out, it definitely stung, and uh, we just decided right then and there, we're not going to let it define, you know, our performance. It's not going to let it di dictate what 
success means to us, which is crowds coming out and having a laugh. That's what we're there for. And, and what did you learn then, do you think? I just learned you can't let it affect you too much because I wanted to quit for sure a little bit after they came out. You think, I, I don't deserve to be here. I shouldn't be doing this. But you have to remember that the crowds are having fun and the turnouts are well, and that's what the Fringe is really about, you know? And developing a thick skin. Well, thanks very much for this, Kara. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, Janet, we are going to be keeping with this theme. Job Schmidt will be back with us to tell us a little bit about the Fringe Festival clunkers that are coming out this year. All right. Thanks very much, Jenny. BC News at 6. We head back to Old Market Square, a place you can go outside and play for the final look at this year's Winnipeg Fringe Festival. Stay with us. I'm just going to put on a little bit of music here. We are so lucky in Winnipeg to have so many great festivals. You've got to get out and support them. This is your last weekend to catch any fringe shows, to go buy stuff from the wonderful vendors at the market who need your help. Jenny Beck, what should people know as we head into the final weekend of the fringe? Well, I think some good information is talking about the shows that maybe didn't quite work. Joff Schmidt is our lead reviewer. Uh, now, Joff, before we launch into this, would you say there's a place in the fringe for shows that didn't quite work? Most definitely. Everybody's got to start somewhere, right? And you don't always start with necessarily the greatest show on the face of the earth. The other thing to remember, too, is the old saying, you know, one man's junk, another man's treasure, right? <laughs> so, I mean, a show that somebody doesn't like, somebody else might find very entertaining, and, and you really find that here at the fringe. So we've talked a lot about the hits. Let's talk about some of the misses, then. Okay, well, here are some of the shows that our reviewers did not quite love. Starting, uh, well, got to respect these guys. Cross-Eyed Rascals are a Winnipeg improv troupe. They have an admirable aim, which is to do clean improv that's family-friendly, so with none of the swearing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, their show this year is called The Mennonite's Guide to Savage Street Fighting. It's one of my favorite titles of The Fringe, but our reviewer, when she saw it, did not really care for the show. Apparently, the guy's improv skills just not quite there yet. Uh, jokes that didn't work, that sort of thing. So, Mennonite's Guide to Savage Street Fighting, not so savage. Ah, all right then. Moving on to our second one. Okay, now this is one I saw. It's called The Legend of Iceball. Great promise. Uh, it's about it's a story about the rise and fall of a gangster rapper. Now, the problem is, just didn't work. The performance not very strong. The rap, not great. One of the things that really bugged me about it was there's a lot of really strong language in the show, and when I saw it, there were a bunch of kids in the audience because there's no language warning on this show. So, if you do decide against my advice that you want to go, don't take the kids because there's a lot of raw language in it. Yeah, or keep their ears covered. <laughs> I saw one kid who did have his fingers in his ears at the show. It's true. Okay, now finally, uh, one, again, a local company that keeps coming back, trying hard, but just not making it this year. Who's coming to dinner? It's supposed to be kind of a uh, culture clash comedy, but the jokes just call fall kind of flat. There's some acting that's a little stiff, shall we say, which doesn't help. I saw the same company show last year, and actually I kind of thought the same thing, to be quite honest. Just a script that wasn't quite there. Uh, but again, they've been playing to pretty full houses, so it goes to show you there's uh, always an audience for whatever you're doing at the Fringe. It definitely seems like Winnipeg audiences are very supportive. Supportive. Absolutely, and audiences are very forgiving, and again, uh, it, you know, different shows for different people. Right. Well, Joff, it's been a pleasure working with you all all Fringe Festival. Thank you so much for this. Well, thank you very much, Jenny. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope people have a great time this weekend uh, catching a few last shows. Yeah, absolutely. And, Jenna, remember, people can go to our website, cbc.ca slash Manitoba, for all the reviews. And also remember, even if you see a show that you're not crazy about, well, that still can be highly entertaining, and it's really cheap. So head out to the Fringe Festival and catch a show this weekend. There you go, Jenny. Thanks. You have a great weekend. You too. Jenny Beck, host of CBC TV. TV's Living Winnipeg, Monday to Friday, 1 o'clock. I'm looking for my little sister, Rosie Olapetto. She's about this high. Have you seen her? Uh, I don't know. Ha! Come with me, little girl. I will show you the might of a real woman. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to sit here. No! Okay. You want to fight? Hey, you want to turn the depths upside down? No, we're going to get caught. How? We're the only ones in the room, freak face. <laughs> Coming up, no boys allowed. Global's Connie Tomoto takes a look at some girls-only performances at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival. Stay with us. The Spice Girls reunion tour kicks off this fall, but you don't have to wait until then to experience some girl power. As Global's Connie Tomoto reports, girl power is actually one of the most popular themes at this year's Fringe Festival. 
ladies. Welcome to the Kotex Craft Corner. I'm the gals from Girls Only are dishing out some crafty laughs at this year's Fringe. But sorry, guys, the show is strictly for women. No boys allowed. It's just the girly girliness that makes us all girls. And it's a comedy, but there's a lot of truth and honor in it. Female Fringers are taking center stage, offering up a series of shows written by women, performed by women, and of course, geared towards women. Now, along with lipstick, which is my one thing I have to put on before I leave the house alive, I have to put on bloody eyebrow pencil. In 64 and No More Lies, this performer gives a first-hand account of growing old and the problems encountered with it. People do come up to me and relate to the problems, relate to the issues in the show, and that really makes me feel good. Aside from real-life experiences, there are also shows about famous females in history. I don't want to dance with him. I don't want to dance with anybody. And even if I did, it wouldn't be him. He'd be well down among the last. Ten. Portraying the role of pioneering feminist Dorothy Parker, McLean says the opportunity to tell Parker's story was both uplifting and empowering. Because she was an icon of her time and she was so good with language, she was a um, really brilliant writer. And it's fun to kind of take an hour and be in that, in that headspace or behind her rimmed glasses. Connie Tomoto, Global News. Well, if you Final numbers are in, though, and the news is good for the Fringe Festival organizers. Attendance records fell as record-breaking number of people took in the Fringe. <laughs> 71,921 people took in this year's Fringe Festival. That demolishes the previous record set last year by more than 2,500 people. Because of the high numbers, organizers were able to give almost half a million dollars back to the performers. Officials with the Fringe say they're delighted with the numbers and say this year's success wouldn't have been possible with the, without the tireless work of hundreds of volunteers. And Homer Simpson. Well, it looks like 20 years is a charm for the Winnipeg Fringe Festival. The festival saw record numbers in paid attendance. Almost 72,000 people went to the festival. That surpasses last year's numbers by almost 3,000. However, it looks like the heat affected outdoor attendance. Those numbers dropped from last year. Organizer, organizers had over 600 volunteers helping out. Heat we had over the last week or so didn't keep fringers away from the old market square. Organizers say Winnipeg Fringe Festival attendance was almost 72,000. That's inside the especially air-conditioned venues. It's a new record as well. A total of $470,000 in box office revenue returned to the performers. Hey, that's great news. It's such a good festival. It's so good to yeah. think it's healthy. It is. And performers at this year's Winnipeg Fringe Festival took their final bow last night, and they heard more applause than ever before. Organizers are calling it the most successful year in the Fringe's 20-year history. A new record for paid attendance this year, 71,900, although those people were attending performances inside mainly air-conditioned venues. The recent heat wave really hurt outdoor attendance. About 60,000 fewer people took in free stage entertainment at Old Market Square. Oh, it was hard. It was definitely hard. It was hard on the patrons, it was hard on the volunteers and the staff, uh, you know, the volunteers were just sweating it out here because they run the festival. So it's, it's it, it, you know, it did have an uh, impact on us. And well, after raking in some big money, it's time for the big cleanup at the Winnipeg Fringe Festival venues. It's pretty much empty now, but for the last two weeks, Old Market Square has been bustling with activity. This year's Fringe Fest broke attendance records, bringing in more than 70,000 people to the indoor stages. And the total box office revenue was over $470,000. 100% of that goes back to the artists, to the companies. So they receive all of that money, and uh, so that's excellent. The, you know, and 50% local companies, so 50% uh, of that stays, you know, in Manitoba. The French press cleanup is expected to last until the end of the week as crews go through all indoor venues. And that's completely different. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Big song. Let your hearts be light. I love it when you do that. From I now on, it. our oh. troubles will be out of sight. Here we are, as in olden days. Happy golden days. Do you feel more. it in your heart? I feel it in my heart too. Faithful friends I think I've who are my heart. dear to us. Now I'm getting a headache. Gather near oh. to us once oh. more. Don't stop! Don't stop! Through the years we all will be together. 
have oh, a the new idea. Allow. Hang a shining star upon that highest bough. Can I see it? The light. Yes. It's so beautiful. And have yourself a merry little Christmas. Now. <laughs> That was wonderful, Neil. Thank you. Uh, wh how do you ever, why do you even bother with these other two? Oh, they get, they get me gigs, which yeah. is good, yeah. 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 <laughs> so far, it's, I think, uh, going to be six this year, which is, you know, that's wow. not too bad, yeah. Half a dozen, very well, good. Well, when very people good. are getting you gigs, you, you stick with them. <laughs> yeah. I've got Neil, I've got Tim, I've got Mitch. These two rascals here, cross-eyed rascals, you might recognize them from a hot summer in July, the Fringe. Back again, yeah. Granny's Fruitcake. Granny's Fruitcake this year. I hate fruitcake. This is our fifth serving. This Whoa. fruitcake is not going away. No, but really, this is a funny show. It's it's like the doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> it never goes away. It's it's there every year. You our just door put is it down. always open. It's always open, yes. And you've added a double bonus here with Neil. Absolutely. Well, we try to have a special guest every year, and Neil might be our specialist guest ever, yes. uh, to use my very, very best grammar. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a good friend and a fantastic singer, so we're really excited to have him. And what's the experience been like so far for you, Neil? Uh, this experience? You mean being involved with the Rascals? Yes. Uh, it's been nothing short of amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank Very you. well put. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We love you, I, I brought you down, though, not only to plug your show, but because proceeds from your show. Well, there is no proceeds because the show is absolutely free, folks, but there is a catch. Well, it's small one. Small. Uh, take the money that you would spend on tickets, maybe, and uh, bring a non-perishable food item for Winnipeg Harvest. Or make a donation to Habitat for Humanity. Well, that's very, very thoughtful and kind of you guys. So, all, through all these performances, how much food have you raised? How many, how many tons, pounds? Well, over the past four previous shows, over a thousand dollars for for Habitat, and over well, around six hundred pounds for Winnipeg Harvest. Wow, very so good. We we hope to top our our new best last year was two hundred pounds for for Harvest and four hundred dollars for Habitat. Yeah. So we're hoping to best that. Okay, well yeah. you brought in the ringer. You've got Neil Keep this year. So folks, the big information, the time and the date for Granny's Fruitcake. December 8th, two shows. There's a matinee at 3 and an evening show at 7.30. Prairie Theatre Exchange Main Stage. Okay, and it's absolutely free, folks. But don't forget, non-perishable food item and cash for Habitat. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I am going to ask you, Neil, though, to sing us out with a nice holiday song for Backstage on Shaw TV. Sure. Here he is, folks, Neil Keith. Want me to hold this? Yeah. All right. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow.